Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Today, we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China recently. In humanity's new race to the moon, China has taken significant stride while also experiencing a recent setback. On the 21st of March, China successfully launched the Chuequiao 2 relay satellites using the Long March 8 rocket from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center. This satellite plays a crucial role in maintaining communication with the far side of the moon, which is always facing away from the Earth. This will allow continuous coverage for up to 8 hours during critical missions. The first mission to benefit from Chuequiao 2 will be the Chang'e 6 mission in May, which aims to return samples from the far side of the moon. But the satellite capabilities extend beyond that, supporting planned missions to establish a prototype lunar base at the South Pole by 2028 and potentially assisting spacecraft from international partners. Chuequiao 2's predecessor, the original Chuequiao Relay, has been instrumental in maintaining contact with the Chang'e 4 lander and U-22 rover on the far side since 2019. With an extended lifespan at at least 9 years, Chuequiao 2 will significantly enhance China's capabilities for lunar exploration and potential crew missions in the decades ahead. The launch also carried two experimental satellites, Tiandu-1 and Tiandu-2 which will test lunar navigation and communication technologies. These satellites will orbit the moon and validate important systems for China's future Chuequiao constellation, which is a network of navigation and communication satellites around the moon. However, China recently experienced a rare miss in its lunar program. Just before the Chuequiao 2 launch, a pair of test satellites DROA and DROB failed to reach their intended distant retrograde orbit due to an issue with the rocket's upper stage. From DRO orbits, they were supposed to travel in formation with DROL, another satellite successfully launched into low Earth orbit in February, and test laser-based navigation technology between Earth and the Moon. At the same time, other countries like the United States and Japan have also encountered launch problems recently. SpaceX Starship upper stage vehicle lost contact and burned up during atmospheric re-entry. Japanese Callisto small solid rocket exploded just 5 seconds after liftoff. This reminds us of the immense risk and challenges still inherent in space exploration, even nearly 70 years after humans first ventured into space. The China-US tech war has finally extended to the realm of biology. On February 28, Joe Biden signed an executive order that restricts researchers from certain countries like China from accessing and using sensitive data in the United States, particularly personal health data and human genome data. The impact of this order is still unclear and so are which databases will be restricted. However, given the current difficulties in renewing the China-US Science and Technology Cooperation Agreement, it could potentially worsen the ongoing decoupling between China and the US in the field of technology. In the worst-case scenario, China's life science research could be significantly affected if it loses access to databases such as PubMed, UK Biotank, PCGA, and GEO. And even if Chinese scholars can somehow access these databases, their studies, those that use those data, may not be accepted in Western academic publications. It has happened before, like the situation with MATLAB, a program that analyzes data. Chinese institutions are not allowed to use it or publish data obtained from it because top academic journals are still controlled by Western publishing groups. And this is not a problem that only China is dealing with. In 2013, the US Congress passed legislation prohibiting US editors and editorial board members from receiving submissions from Iranian writers. And of course, US journals rejected all papers from Iran. However, the impact was so significant that European publishing companies also followed suit. On a positive note, this challenge presents an opportunity for China to accelerate the development of its own robust 
biological database. After all, the country has a big population of 1.4 billion people, which provides an enormous amount of biological data. In the biomedical sector, it has a vast volume of clinical data that can support industrial development. China has over 1 million medical and health institutions, which handles around 8 billion diagnoses and treatments annually. China has already established a National Genomics Science Data Center and initiated collaboration with various European and American databases. Many colleges have also created databases of various sorts. However, China's biological databases still lag behind those of Europe, America and Japan in terms of infrastructure, data convergence and emissions, search alignments and other factors. In any case, the road ahead is still long and challenging. We will keep a close eye on how the impact of this order will unfold over time. Over the past few years, we've witnessed a remarkable rise in large language models. These AI models have revolutionized how we interact with technology. However, this progress comes with a huge cost of energy consumption. A study shows that ChatGPT responds to about 200 million requests a day, consuming more than 500,000 kilowatts hours of electricity. That is equivalent to the energy usage of 17,000 American households. Apart from electricity consumption, AI systems also require a large amount of water for cooling the computing equipment and are significant contributors to carbon emissions. Take GPT-3 as an example, this massive model with its 175 billion parameters needs around 700,000 liters of water to train in Microsoft's US data center. That's roughly the same amount of water needed to fill a nuclear reactor's cooling tower or more than what 203,000 American households would use on a single day. It also releases 502 metric tons of carbon during training, comparable to the lifetime emission of 8 regular gasoline cars or 91 years of per capita carbon emissions. Elon Musk recently warned that the rapid growth of AI computing power could lead to electricity and transformer shortages as early as 2025. While Musk's prediction is taken with a grain of salt, his concerns highlight the urgent need to address the energy demand of AI. Researchers have been exploring ways to reduce the computational and memory requirements of these models. A group from the University of China's Academy of Science and Microsoft Research Asia has made a breakthrough with the BitNet B1.58 model. Unlike traditional large language models that employ 16-bit floating point values, BitNet B1.58 uses 10 values of minus 1, 0, 1, resulting in a 1.58-bit model. Surprisingly, despite the reduced precision, this new model performs as well as full precision models with the same size and training tokens. BitNet B1.85 has several advantages. It uses integer addition instead of floating point operations, which saves a lot of energy and makes computations faster. It reduces memory usage, leading to faster loading time and lower cost for transferring models' parameters to specialized hardware. Introducing one-bit large language model has far-reaching implications for the future of AI hardware and software. These models greatly reduce energy consumption and computational requirements, leading to more sustainable and accessible AI solutions. Other researchers are also trying to overturn the underlying logic of large language models and address limitations in computing power, especially against the backdrop of the US chip embargo. And that is all for today's Threshold. We hope you like this new section on science and technology in China. As usual, we welcome your feedback and thoughts.